Earlier this year at the Paris Air Show, Israel's Rafael unveiled an upgraded member of its high-energy laser family, Iron Beam 450, and then put the system back in the spotlight at DSEI in London this September. Now, Israel's Ministry of Defense says Iron Beam has completed development, passed final tests, and is being delivered for operational service. So, in today's video, we're taking a closer look at Iron Beam. What it is, how it works, where it fits in Israel's layered air defense, and what limitations still apply. Let's dive in. Iron Beam is a ground-based, high-power laser designed to destroy short-range rockets, mortars, artillery rounds, and drones by focusing energy on a small spot until the target structure fails. The system is built by Israel's Rafael Advanced Defense Systems with Elbit Systems as a key partner and is intended to complement, not replace, interceptor missiles like Iron Dome, David's Sling, and Arrow. Israeli officials say the latest test campaign in southern Israel demonstrated a complete operational configuration, intercepting multiple target types in seconds and clearing the path to fielding. Integration into the air defense network is planned by year's end. The reveal cadence this year matters. In June 2025 at Le Bourget, Raphael showcased a family of laser systems, Light Beam, Iron Beam M, and the larger Iron Beam 450 with an upgraded beam director, framing a modular approach from mobile to relocatable to naval applications. Two months later at DSEI 2025, the company again highlighted Iron Beam 450, emphasizing range growth, faster intercept timelines, and cost per engagement advantages versus missiles, along with a naval variant concept. Those public appearances were followed by Israel's formal operational announcement on September 17, 2025. So, what do we know about Iron Beam? The land-based Iron Beam is described as being in the 100 kilowatt class for very short-range air defense, with a naval Iron Beam variant applying similar power at sea. A truck-mounted Iron Beam M is pitched in the 30 to 50 kilowatt range for mobile units, while Light Beam covers the 10 kilowatt niche for small UAS. The 450 refers to a 450 millimeter beam director aperture, a larger optical path that sharpens focus and helps extend useful range. Trials and briefings have cited kill times measured in seconds and engagements around 10 kilometers, both target and weather dependent, and repeatedly emphasized a single digit dollar marginal shot cost. The deployed architecture is relocatable and containerized, pairing a gimbaled beam director up front with separate power and thermal management modules. Test footage has also shown dual effector configurations to work multiple tracks in parallel. How it works is straightforward in concept and hard in practice. Iron Beam couples a high-energy laser, precision beam director, and adaptive optics to keep energy on a moving target through the atmosphere. The shot cost is effectively the price of electricity. Israeli officials and company reps describe it as single-digit dollars, which is a significant contrast to radar-guided interceptors that often cost tens of thousands per shot. That cost curve is the strategic attraction. Using lasers for the cheapest targets and preserving missiles for what lasers cannot handle reduces the overall burn rate in a saturation campaign. What can it hit, and at what range? Israel's defense establishment says the system has proven itself against UAVs, rockets, mortars, and even small aircraft in testing. In terms of reach, officials and trade press reporting put engagement ranges on the order of several to around 10 kilometers, depending on target type and atmospheric conditions. That places Iron Beam squarely in the very short-range air defense mission where reaction time is measured in seconds and magazine depth matters. Where does it sit in Israel's architecture? Iron Beam is intended to slot below David's sling and alongside Iron Dome, handing off harder or longer-range engagements to missiles while shouldering routine drone, rocket, and mortar threats when weather allows. This layered approach is central to Israel's air defense philosophy, 
and the government says the laser layer is the first of its kind to reach operational maturity. The United States has also appropriated funds to support Iron Beam, underscoring allied interest in directed energy for air defense. The 2025 public showings also point to where the technology is going. Rafael is pairing the land system with a naval version and a mobile truck mounted Iron Beam M, aiming for common technology blocks across platforms. The intent is to scale power and aperture to the mission while keeping software, optics, and controls as common as possible. All of that said, lasers come with real constraints. Atmospheric effects such as fog, rain, dust, smoke, and turbulence scatter and absorb energy, degrading performance just when massed rocket fire may coincide with bad weather. Lasers are line of sight and need a steady dwell time on target to burn through, which means precise tracking and stabilization under jamming or clutter. Thermal management and power supply also set limits on sustained fire, even though the magazine is electricity. Israeli and industry officials say new adaptive optics and beam combining techniques mitigate some of these issues, but they do not eliminate them. There is, finally, the question of scale. Israel's announcement signals the transition from demonstration to deployment, but how many units, what alert posture, and what daily sortie capacity they can sustain are still open questions. Trade reporting indicates production is underway with deliveries expected by the end of 2025, and defense officials are explicit that lasers will be additively a cost-effective first layer, not a silver bullet that replaces interceptors. In other words, success will be measured in how the laser is used in concert with missiles, not whether lasers can do it all. Iron Beam's operational debut is a milestone for directed energy, a fielded, networked, high-energy laser that promises pennies per shot defense against the cheapest threats. Its value will depend on weather, power, doctrine, and on how fast Israel can field enough systems to matter across multiple fronts. But as a complement to Iron Dome and David's sling, it could change the economics of air defense in Israel and beyond. What do you think? Is this the start of a laser layer in modern air defense or an impressive niche that will remain weather limited? Let us know in the comments below. And if you found this video insightful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the latest defense news and analysis.